I'm Michelle Schmidt from the NPCA. I work in the VIC program, which is the Voluntary Investigation and Cleanup Program. I also do some work with the Petroleum Bond Fields Program, which is our sister program. We're separated because of the statute. Um, a quick note on the uh, petroleum sites that you were asking about. Um, there is something called the Petro Fund in Minnesota. So you can be reimbursed for up to 90% of the assessment work. And I think cleanup work too. I'm not an expert on that, <laughs> just on the brownfield side. So um, if you have questions, grab my card later and I can put you in contact with some voluntary investigation cleanup program. We handle everything but petroleum contamination. And then our sister program, Petroleum Brownfields, does um, petroleum contamination from gas stations, bulk storage, that sort of thing. And, and just the brownfield program will sometimes work on sites where there isn't a clearly defined petroleum source. Um, there is one exclusion to the VIC work, and that's uh, pesticides and herbicides that's handled by the Department of Agriculture. I have their info later on, but actually that's not very common, so don't worry too much about it. Um, common voluntary parties come into our, our program are uh, local units of government, developers, um, nonprofits, we get a fair number of those, other state agencies like MnDOT, Sometimes lenders, um, but the most common one is the developers. So they'll actually come to our program and do the, uh, the assessment work and if needed any cleanup work. Um, usually it's larger developers that are, you know, have that extra money and, and time. Um, so what do we do? We provide technical oversight. We provide assurance letters and um, it kind of goes through the same process Jennifer was talking about, where once you um, assess the site, usually that's a phase one environmental site assessment, then you, you realize there might be something there. And you may enter our programs then, or you may wait until you've done some phase two work and you actually know there's contamination, and then um, you can enter the programs and you get things like um, no association determinations. I'll talk a little bit about that in the next slide. Um, the VIC program began in 1988. Uh, the Petroleum Brownfield program was briefly called the Petroleum VIC, PVIC program. Um, now it's just Petroleum Brownfields. Uh, we keep track of acreage and number of sites, um, 67,000 acres or so through VIC, over 10,000 through Petroleum Brownfields. And those are sites that have come through and received an assurance of some sort of done, some sort of cleanup. A lot of our sites are joint sites. They're, they belong to both programs. They have all sorts of contamination. That's really, really common. Um, a lot of us are being cross-trained now, so we uh, can do both sets of work. So common big sites, uh, old dumps, uh, old dry cleaners, um, rail yards, metal plating shops, um, anything and everything, really. For petroleum, it's the old gas stations, of course, old bulk plants, um, sometimes heating oil tanks, even if they're residential, uh, rail yards again. And the reason people come into the brownfield programs is because they're changing land use. So you, or they're, sometimes they're going from commercial to commercial, but usually they're going from an industrial use to a office use or a commercial use into single family residential or something like that. So that gets them into our program. <coughs> this is a list of the assurances we give. I won't go through it exhaustively because you'll find out if you need to come into our program, you can ask lots of questions and you know, your consultant will help you identify what you're eligible for. Um, but the most common thing uh, is the no association determination. That gives uh, the new owner coverage and it, it basically says, Yes, there's contamination, but you're not the responsible party, so no one's going to come after you for cleanup. And how long does it take? Um, 
all sorts of things we like to spot out, like, you know, your effort makes it go faster, but really it comes down to it's one or two years. And so the, the more comprehensive data you're able to collect, the faster it'll go, it'll be less surprises, but one to two years is pretty general. A lot of things got um, held up with the economic slowdown, recession, whatever you want to call it, and installed out for a couple of years, but average. Um, some tips on moving through more efficiently. Again, this is something uh, you know, you'll, you'll find out when you're working with someone in our program or with, uh, from your consultant, because they're usually pretty familiar with our process. Um, there's a note down there about making sure your investigations are complete um, to eliminate surprises, but even if you have a really complete investigation, there are usually some surprises, so don't count on that. I have some web links that you'll get when you can uh, go online and look at the presentations. You can uh, click on those to get some more information. You can also call anyone in the Brownfield programs and ask questions. Uh, obviously, some people are a little busier than others, but uh, I'm always willing to field a phone call. I have some site photos, just to break it up a little before we get into the um, our grant program. And I don't know if any of them are from Bemidji, Sorry, uh, I did not work on the new hockey arena, so um, this is an example of an old dump that's now a um, health clinic. This is an old grain elevator that was made into a apartments, and actually the grain elevator is going to be made into um, like a penthouse condo type thing, but all the other structures are gone. This is in Duluth. Um, it's an old iron plant, uh, they made all sorts of things, huge, huge room, um, and now it's a hockey arena and YMCA and uh, indoor football and soccer field. And this is just an old uh, medical clinic that's been redeveloped, they actually kept the building, so it's a little different than some of our sites where they uh, take down the old structures. This is in Rochester. Uh, again, an old building it was redeveloped into this new office complex. Uh, an old gas manufacturing plant, which I know a lot of towns uh, had in the past. Uh, it's pretty common. There are certain contaminants that are associated with that. Um, this one's actually being restored into the prairie. And that picture was from two years ago. Uh, the Twins Ballpark is a brownfield. It was just a lot of old rail yards and, and parking lot, a little bit of dumping. Um, this is also in the cities. It's an old um, NSP Excel power plant, and they converted it to natural gas, but in the process they did some cleanup. This is another clinic, and the picture, the before picture you see is um, just an example of what sometimes you find in the old buildings, and this is, um, you know, something coming through the slab uh, that can be concerning depending on what they process there. And now it's a medical clinic. So the next slides are about the targeted, the Minnesota targeted brownfield assessment program. And I know it's confusing because we have the same uh, acronym, or almost the same as the EPA program, but the Minnesota ones um, are a little different. Uh, we operate on the federal funding cycle, so we get new money every October 1st, and we use it until it's gone. Um, so right now, we don't really have any left. I think maybe just a little bit, but in October, we're ready for a new around. We have an application online. It's two pages. It's really simple. There's no essay. There's no really hard questions. And each question is yes or no. And if it's uh, the right answer, you, you keep going down. So you know right away. You basically know right away if you're eligible. We limit the people that can apply for this. Um, but it's basically people that are in this room. Uh, nonprofits, city, county government that sort of thing. 
Um, you don't have to own the site necessarily. You can just apply um, because you either intend to own it or you're trying to facilitate uh, redevelopment. And it doesn't have to be redevelopment for jobs per se. We're, we're happy to do um, brownfield to greenfield sites, trails, parks, anything like that. So it's a little different than some of the assessment money that's available from deed that you'll hear about next. Um, it's pretty exciting. I covered most of this, but we actually encourage all the state applicants to apply because there are, there's a certain amount of assessment money available to metro um, cities, sites, and not so much to greater Minnesota. So we try to get people outside of the Twin Cities to apply. Um, right now we have a site in Williams, Minnesota. I don't know if anyone knows where that is. <laughs> see a couple heads in Canada, basically. And <laughs> so population 350 or something. We're doing their old school. Um, um, what can it do for you? Our grant program is actually really um, great because uh, the EPA grants you, if you're awarded a grant, then you hire a contractor to do the work or a consultant, whatever term you want to use. With the Minnesota Targeted Brownfield Assessment Grant, uh, if you're, if you are eligible and if we do the work, we actually hire the contractor. Um, you don't have to do any of it. Uh, we'll coordinate site visits with you, interviews, that sort of thing. But we go out and do the work, or our contractors do, and then you get the phase one ESA. And if there is a reason to do um, subsurface investigation, we do that, and then you get the report. And if needed, if cleanup is necessary, we'll prepare a response action plan. We can't pay for the cleanup, but we can actually pay for the plan. So it gets you really close to the end. I talked about the application a little bit. You'll see the link at the end. Um, it's really short. It includes the access agreement. Um, we ask that you send a map with it. With the, along with the cover letter and the actual application. Um, but if you can't find one, we can help with that. Um, I've given you the coordinator's name and uh, phone number, John Betcher, and you can email him or call him. He's in most days, he's a really nice guy. Um, I can also answer any questions and work as a team. Um, and we're the ones that are gonna be reviewing all the reports and kind of making sure that um, Things are done the way they would at any brownfield site. That's the website. I already talked about what you get. You get the full reports at the end. And um, some basic numbers, I guess, if you're not familiar. Phase one environmental site assessment, or ESA, usually costs anywhere from four to Six thousand dollars. It can be a little more if it's a bigger site, or if there's some a lot of um, a lot of uh, old files that need to be reviewed or something like that that can increase the cost. Um, phase two can be anywhere from uh, a phase two is the subsurface work. Phase two can be anywhere from ten thousand to forty thousand dollars. So you know these things add up quite a bit. The cleanup is always more than that. And I'm sorry we can't help with it, but uh, at least to get some things moving in the right direction. And I've provided my name and contact information. And I think I'll just let Mer or Meredith go and we can do questions at the end because our presentations are linked. <laughs>